let's talk Ohio State. They played Iowa. They won. It was a breeze in Columbus. QB commit Tavian St. Clair, the five-star plus prospect. He hasn't missed the game this season. So, of course, Tavian St. Clair was in the building. And talking to those Ohio State insiders, Tavian St. Clair might not miss a game all season. What a great representative to have on campus. Other big names on campus this weekend, as you can see. You know, there's other teams coming after some of these guys, Steve, like a Riley Pettijan, a TJ Alford, a Zion Grady. How important was it for Ohio State to have some of these guys on for an easy win in Big Ten conference play? Dominant on both sides of the ball against a very hard-nosed Iowa team. Ohio State has the number one recruiting class in the country. And anytime you can get these guys back around each other to continue to build that bond, can continue to allow them to talk about their future together, making an impact inside the shoe is inches in the recruitment. You never know how they're going to add up. Obviously, Tavian St. Clair's locked in out of Bellafonte, Ohio. He's the jewel of a class, but Devin Sanchez back on campus. He's been rock solid to Ohio State. Riley Pettijan was one of the biggest recruiting wins of the cycle, pulling him out of the Lone Star State over Texas, Texas A&M, USC, among others. Quincy Porter, they beat their rival Michigan for him. Tarvos, TJ Alford out of the Sunshine State. Barrow Beach, you know, he's taken some visits this fall to Florida State and Miami, but I think he's still good with his commitment to Ohio State. Zion Grady, he had love at times for Auburn and Florida yeah. State uh, during his process, but the visits to Ohio State always blow him away. He's committed. They get him back on campus this weekend. Same with Nate Roberts, tight end commit that Oregon's been trying to chip away at. So uh, I, I don't think Ohio State has anything to worry about with the guys that returned to campus this weekend and visited. Yeah, a, a pretty standard a big visit weekend for Ohio State, getting in a lot of the commitments, mm -hmm. and they'll gear this thing up to get the big uncommitted targets and the flip targets on campus as the season goes on. Next weekend, Ohio State will be involved in a big visit weekend. It's just not their own. It's going to be in Eugene, Steve. As we were about to jump on, they uh, announced that that game is going to be in prime time. So I'm thinking, you know, with you in here in Nashville next weekend, I think maybe we go live for that Ohio State Oregon recruit reaction show. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. It's going to be star studded, five stars everywhere. Heading out to Eugene, and Naeem Offord will be there. He's an Ohio State commit, been committed to the Buckeyes since February. Auburn and Oregon are trying to change that. And then you have Jakeem Stewart, Josh, five-star defensive lineman, announced his reclassification today from 2026 to 2025, a long time coming, has set four official visits. His first one's going to be to Oregon next weekend to see two of his top four schools Oregon and Ohio State, the Buckeyes are going to get two chances to impress as he visits Ohio State for the Michigan game. He loves getting on campus around Larry Johnson and that coaching staff, loves the way they develop high-profile defensive linemen in the past and loves the way that they've recruited, thinks it's a championship program for years to come. But they got their hands full, you know, LSU getting a visit for the Alabama game and then USC getting a visit for the Nebraska game. There's been times where USC has looked like they've had the momentum, and there's always a ton of confidence around LSU that they'll ultimately close the prize in-state recruit. Yeah, so we're talking about Jakeem Stewart. Really interesting story here. He reclassifies from 26 to the 2025 class. Jakeem Stewart in the 2026 class was the number one prospect overall. He was the number one defensive lineman in America, and he's from the state of Louisiana. That much we knew. We weren't sure. You know, there was rumors even back to the spring that Jakeem Stewart was going to reclassify. We talked about it all summer. It didn't happen. We got into the fall, and we start to hear those rumors intensify, and today he does it. The number. So now I said what he was for the 26 class. Let's talk about what he is for the 2025 class. He is the number 14 ranked player overall, the number three defensive lineman in America in the 2025 class. So with that being said, you broke some big news on where he's going to take official visits. Uh, but looking at his recruiting prediction machine, we got LSU trending at about 91% right now. That's what it was, at least heading into this game. Uh, is LSU going to be the team to beat over the next two, two and a half months? I think most people feel that way, that Jakeem Stewart, uh, that LSU will be tough to beat. But when you talk to his camp, you talk to him, you get the sense that USC has led at times and Ohio State 
has led us led at times as well. And so uh, LSU, they're going to have their hands full with the Trojans and the Buckeyes. And then the Ducks, you never sleep on Oregon when it's closing time. He's taking his official visit to Oregon next weekend. That's going to be his first official visit to the process. He is called Dan Lanning, a defensive mastermind. Then he is going to go to LSU for the LSU-Alabama game. That will be his second LSU game of the fall after taking one in last month. He's really connected with defensive line coach Bo Davis. Frank Wilson's been leading the charge on his recruitment. His ties in state are second to none. He loves the advice he gets from Frank Wilson outside of football. He says he's not opposed to going to a school out of state, but obviously he knows a lot of people in that LSU locker room. He's been to campers numerous times. He's camped. He feels very comfortable Mm -hmm. at LSU. Uh, But he's going to go from LSU. I believe his next visit will be USC for the Nebraska game. Coach Eric Henderson, USC's defensive line coach, who coached Aaron Donald, among others, in the NFL, won a Super Bowl. He's from New Orleans. He's part of this USC staff that is turning things around defensively, turning a culture around. And Lincoln Riley told Jakeem Stewart well before the season that he was going to get the defense right, that he was going to get the right coaches into that program to get them rolling on the defensive side of the ball. He has told Jakeem Stewart no lies. He was blown away by USC's season opening performance victory over LSU. I think that was a needle mover in his recruitment. He's been to the Trojans campus numerous times, knows that coaching staff well. Coach Henny, I'm not sure there's a coach doing a better job recruiting him right now. Some would say Frank Wilson, but he is really connected with Coach Henny, who would be his position coach if he picked USC. So yeah. uh, he likes what, what they're doing and their trajectory. And then Ohio State gets the last official visit for the Michigan game. He's been there a couple times. It always blows him away. Coach Larry Johnson, Coach Alan Clark. He called Larry Johnson the best defensive line coach in college football history. Um, and uh, again, he loves the way they're recruiting across the board, thinks it's a championship caliber program for years to come. He is going to sign early during the December 4th early signing period, Josh, and he's going to enroll early. So it's going to go fast now with him announcing his reclassification. Great intel there, Steve. That's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask you what you thought his timetable was, because if it is the early signing day, we're talking 11, 12 weeks away. I mean, 11 or 12 weekends away from him making his decision, which isn't a lot of time to take visits. You said uh, you you broke some big news today with his official visit schedule. But, uh, Steve, just just wondering, is there any other team? Because everybody needs an elite defensive lineman. And a five-star just hit the market for the 2025 class. Do you see any other team getting in this recruitment, or is it pretty sealed off right now to the programs you mentioned? Well, you never know if a Miami or a Texas can sneak back in there. Those were two programs that have been prominent at times for Jakeem Stewart. But it's been clear for a while this is his top four. Right. All right. Bama just scored, so we are still keeping an eye on this one. It's getting really Really interesting here. Bama needs to pull this out to beat Vandy, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, we will we'll keep an eye on that. All right. So, Ohio State. Steve, they have the number one class in America, but just in the segment before, you said you thought Georgia is going to be the team to finish number one in America. But what is it with Ohio State? Is there just not enough firepower left on the board for them to continue to maintain number one? Or are you expecting them to lose some prospects here? No, there certainly is. I just think that with what Georgia still has out there, Mm -hmm. with how many more high school players they're going to take, they are the betting favorite to ultimately finish number one. That would take nothing away from this outstanding class that Ohio State has from the five-star quarterback to uh, a a nice group, a nice pair of running backs. Uh, They'd like to land another on the offensive line. I think that when you start looking at guys that they could be recruiting on the offensive line, a name that comes to mind for me for, for, for Arkansas is Connor house. He's an offensive tackle uh, from Florida committed to Arkansas. I think Ohio state is a program that you could maybe see get involved there. Uh, So I think they'd like to add another offensive lineman to this class, maybe another defensive back, Perhaps Anthony Turbo Rogers, who's committed to Alabama, if they like to go to a third running back because they're they're going to lose their top two, uh, the top duo on college football, perhaps at the end of the season. Um, so running back, DB, offensive line, probably the 
the places where they would like to add another as they wrap up this cycle. Uh, and, and then obviously defensive line with guys like Jakeem Stewart and, and Malik Autry. If they land Jakeem Stewart, they stay number one. Yeah, absolutely. That would help keep them number one. So I state fans, a very convincing win over Iowa today. Got to feel good about that as you head to Eugene. So talk to us, comment section below, how are we feeling about recruiting and how are we feeling about today's big win? Let us know.